It was a fall Saturday morning in 2001. I had to drive later that day to a camp that my high school youth group was going to. The retreat had started the night before, but I was a day late. These were the days before smartphones. I know some of you have never had a day in your life where you didn't have access to a smartphone. Believe it or not, there was a time where society existed without smartphones. The internet was still very new, and while we had the internet, we didn't have all the functionality of it. I'm not even sure if MapQuest existed or not, but all I know is it didn't exist in the Pursley house. And so I got directions for how to get to the camp, and I thought I had pretty good directions. And so I exited the interstate, followed the path that I had written down, and all of a sudden, there was a road that was closed and no marked detour. To complicate things, I had my brand new girlfriend with me. Now, those of you who are married know that uh, your husband has never been lost, <laughs> ever. He's taking a scenic route, maybe making his own detour, but he is never, ever lost. And if you suggest that he's lost, it is the lowest of low blows that you can possibly, possibly challenge him with. And so she looked over at me and said, now what do we do? And I said, don't worry. We got this. After two and a half hours of driving all over Coshocton County and not finding the camp which we were supposed to be at, she suggested maybe we stop and ask for directions. I almost broke up with her right then. <laughs> and in hindsight, I should have. But I, I listened. I listened. I went into a, a convenience store and asked for directions, to which this glazed-over look uh, arrived on the face of this gentleman. He said, I, I've never heard of that camp. I have no idea where that is. Try another store down the road. I went into that store, and the glazed-over look of the attendant told me that He'd eaten some brownies or smoked a little something, so I wasn't even going to bother asking him because he, he wouldn't know. And, and so I just, I was lost. And we tried to call people, but the cell phone reception was not coming in. And an hour and a half later, after we backtracked and drove over what felt like every road in Coshocton County, Ohio, we finally found the camp. We knew where we needed to end up, but we didn't know exactly how to get there. We had a pretty good idea, but we didn't have turn-by-turn -turn directions that now every single one of us carries in our pocket in a smartphone. We didn't have printed out directions that 10 years ago we could have easily gotten from MapQuest. We had a destination in mind, but as soon as as a variable came into play that we weren't factoring. We were, dare I say, and I still don't like to admit this all these years later, we were lost. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we didn't know how to get to where we wanted to go. Over the course of the last few weeks in Clarity, we've discussed our detailed plan on how to arrive where we believe God is calling us and leading us as a church. And today, as we finalize that, I am convinced today what we see will either help us fulfill our mission or hinder us from being able to do so. I really believe that. I really believe what we're going to talk about today is the thing that will either help us fulfill our mission or will be the thing that will hinder us from being able to fulfill the mission that God has called Lakeside to. And so if you have your Bible apps, you can follow along on the events section. 
We're Lakeside Community Church. Otherwise, no worries, it'll be on the screens. But if you haven't downloaded the Bible app on your phones or your tablets, I just want to encourage you. Phenomenal resource. I can't recommend it enough. Go to the App Store, type in Bible. It's the first one that pops up. Download it. It'll send you a verse of the day if you want. You don't have to sign up for that, but it will send you a notification daily. There's all kinds of phenomenal resources thousands of translations, reading plans that will help you regardless of where you are in your spiritual journey, all for free. It's an incredible resource if you haven't downloaded that. But we're going to start this morning in Philippians 2, where we read these words. So if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection and sympathy, Basically, what the Apostle Paul here is saying is, if God has done anything for you, now think about that statement, if God has done anything for you, this is a good old-fashioned Christian guilt trip. That's what this is. This is just a good old-fashioned, lay it on thick. This is, this is like if I were to go to my sons and say, if your mother's done anything for you, you should get her a gift on Mother's Day. Right? You can't. What, what child's going to be like, yeah, mom's done nothing for me? I mean, maybe when you're in eighth grade. But after, after that, right? After that, no child's going to be like, yeah, mom's done nothing for me. But that's exactly what he's doing here. Or, or it's like a wife saying to her husband, if you love me and appreciate all I do for you, you'll skip your fantasy football draft tonight and have a This Is Us marathon with me. <laughs> Right? Right? She like lays it on thick, and you're like, oh man, I really love you, but fantasy football or this is us? That's. <sighs> or a husband saying, if you're thankful, I filled up your car with gas and changed the oil. I can go join the guys after work on Thursday night and not make it home for a while. Right? We, all, we all have been guilty of this, and we all, we all can throw on, we all can throw on the guilting. And that's pretty much what the Apostle Paul here is doing. And he's saying, if God has done anything for you, if God has done anything for you, if there is any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, any affection, any sympathy, and then he continues, complete my joy. By being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord, and of one mind. If God has done anything for you, then get along. What? If God has done anything for you, then get along with one another. That's the response that he calls us to in light of all that God has done for us. If God has done anything for us, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Because here's the deal. If we are disunified, we will be destroyed. And all you have to do is look at last Packers season to see that. The reports came out in April in Bleacher Report. And whether you believe all the quotes or not that Mike Murphy reportedly called Aaron Rodgers and told him don't be the problem with the new coaching staff and all the sniping between Mike McCarthy and Aaron Rodgers and, and now all the issue over the audibles and everything. All you have to do to look back, and I understand injuries played a part in everything else, but all you have to do is look back to last Packers season and see the importance of unity. And how unified the Packers can be will in large part dictate how successful they are this season. The same is true in every area of life. If we are unified, there is no question in my mind 
There is no question whatsoever that we will fulfill the mission and the vision that God has given us. And similarly, there's no question in my mind, if we at Lakeside are disunified, we have no chance. This will, leave the, or this will either enable us or hinder us. And guess what? The choice is ours. The choice is ours. We get to choose. That's the incredible thing about this, is we get to choose what we're going to do. And then he continues. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Think about this. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Put other people first. Put other people first. And spoiler, this doesn't come naturally. We had a great time last week at Bay Beach. Thank you, everybody who came out. We got in line for the big wheel, the new Ferris wheel ride. We're in line. We're talking. All of a, cu- all of a sudden, this punk little eight-year-old starts cutting in line. I'm like, who's this kid think he is? Right? Like, get to the back of the line, pal. We're all hot. We're all sweaty. It's, it's a glorious thing. Right? You just, you're just it, you embrace it. You're like, yeah, we're all going to discover new pores we didn't know existed today. That's fine. It's, it's going to be great. And this little eight-year-old snot-nosed kid, I didn't really have snot running from his nose, but he should have. He's like, yeah, whatever. I'm going to go jump up with all my friends in line. And I'm like, I wanted to give him the stank eye. I'm like, who do you think you are? Right? It doesn't come naturally. My first thought when that little eight-year-old came by was to trip him. It wasn't to say... <laughs> I didn't do it, okay, because Jesus is at work within me, but the first thought, my old self is still at work within me too, because the first thought was trip the kid and watch him bleed. (laughs) I didn't, all right, I didn't. But the first thought certainly wasn't, yeah, he can cut you, that's all right, he's more important than you. Let him go in line. This doesn't come naturally, and it's not easy. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. So how do we do that? Well, he continues and he tells us, Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. What's the best way to put others first? What's the best way to to elevate the needs of others and and their desires? Let's take your eyes off yourself and put them on someone else. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus. Jesus who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And then he says, follow the example of Jesus. Follow the example of Jesus. And for those of us who follow Jesus, sometimes we think about the things we have sacrificed because we follow Jesus. Sometimes we think about the things we have sacrificed and the choices we've made that we wouldn't naturally make, but the choices we've made as a result of following Jesus. And he says, no, 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 don't don't necessarily do that. Instead, think of the things that Jesus sacrificed for us so that we could follow him. Don't think of the things that you sacrificed for Jesus. Think of the things that Jesus sacrificed for you. So let's read this again. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. Meaning Jesus left the comfort of heaven, the perfection of paradise, And he humbled himself to take on our form and to be born like us. 
and to have the limitations of any other baby. To be helpless. The creator of everything became helpless. Lived a life of perfection. And who came to pay a price that you and I owe, but are unable to pay. And who came to be obedient to death so that we could have a renewed relationship with our Creator whom we have rebelled against. This is the sacrifice of Jesus. If God has done anything for you, God has done everything for you. And the response must be that we are unified. It isn't an option. It isn't, oh, when I feel like it or, oh, when I like something. That's not the point. The point is we die to ourselves. We put down our own desires and we elevate one another. This is the response that we have to all that God has done for us. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. This is the cost. This is the cost. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under earth, and every tongue confess That Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The cost was grand. The cost was great, but the reward is even greater. And now Jesus is above all things. It all hinges on Jesus. And oh, by the way, you have a choice to make. You can confess the name of Jesus now, or you will one day, but every knee will bow before Jesus, and every person will see the glory of God revealed, and all creation, all who see him, will make the declaration whether they want to or not, whether they choose to or not. They will have no choice but to bow and to say, Jesus is supreme. He's above all things. He has done everything for you. And the response that we're called to is to be unified. This is fascinating. Our mission here at Lakeside is to help people move one step closer to Jesus and reach those who are far from him. That is what drives every choice we make. Every decision we make is framed within that context. That means, by the way, there are going to be times that there are really good programs and there are really good things that are available that we're going to pass on. And it doesn't mean that we're angry about it. It doesn't mean that we think it's a terrible thing. It just means that it doesn't fall within our mission. And understand, we are going to be laser-focused in making sure that every program we offer, everything we promote, falls within that framework. That we are helping people move one step closer to Jesus and reaching those who are far from him. And if something comes along that we believe is going to hinder that work, we're just not going to take part in it. It doesn't mean that we don't like the people involved with it. It doesn't mean that it's a bad program. It just means that it's not for us. So understand, we are driven by this and we are laser focused by that. And as I said earlier, I truly believe our ability to function and God's willingness to bless our efforts will be directly related to our willingness to be unified around that mission. It's that simple. If we are willing to be unified, if we are all willing to say, 
I don't love that. But it's not about me. Then we will succeed. If instead we say, I don't love that, so I'm not going to support it, and I'm going to have a stank face until they change it, we won't. Truth is, the choice is ours. What are we going to choose? We've talked in detail about how we right now are undergoing a search for a worship arts pastor. We've talked about how difficult that job is. We've talked about how we are undergoing a search for a family life pastor and the necessity for that and the different areas they're going to be functioning in. We've talked about our need to expand. Some of you felt it this morning when you walked in. We love the fact that we can have community. But you have to suck in your elbows and and breathe in and suck in the gut and walk sideways sometimes to get through our lobby. We understand. These are challenges that we face. And they're things that we want to address and we want to deal with because we want to have the most user-friendly experience we can possibly have. And we're not about to tell people, well... Stop coming to church and wrap up those conversations so people can beeline it in a little easier, all right? I mean, that's not what we're going to do. So we have a choice to make. What's the choice? We're going to make sure that we alter our facilities to make sure that things are easier to be utilized. But if somebody says, well, I don't like that style, or I don't like the direction the family life pastor wants to go in that area, or... Lakeside doesn't need to expand their building. I'm, I'm just, I'm not getting behind that. And if that becomes prevalent, and we're not unified, we'll be hindered. And we will not see God do all that he can do. And we'll be responsible for standing in his way. If God has done anything for you, if God has done anything for me, then we need to make sure that we're unified, that we're not divisive. This November, I'm incredibly excited. Because I'm going to Disney World. Now you laugh, right? I, I, am, not, I am not one of these guys that's, that's a, and if you are, there's no shame in this. You own it. You do you, all right? I, I'm not Disney World guy. I'm just not. I know some people my age, they love to go to Disney. And I, I have friends who went to Disney on their honeymoon. I, that's not me, all right? I'm not, hey, let's go meet a, a fake giant mouse with really big ears and and, you know, all these people and take the autograph book that you can buy up to them and have them autograph your autograph book. And I, I, that's, that's just, that's not me, all right? Like, I don't want to ride in some little vehicle and hear It's a Small World 78 times. And again, not me. Uh, there, there's just a lot of things about Disney that aren't me. But I can't tell you how excited I am for November. And the reason is a couple years ago, we took the kids to Disney. And this is one of the magic bands that you get when you go to Disney. And if you have fast passes, it's on there. If, heaven forbid, you lose a child, they can track their exact location anywhere in the park and who's around them. This gets you, if you have the meal plan, it's all right on there. And you just wear this band, and they scan it everywhere you go. This band is absolutely worthless outside of Disney World. This band is in my kid's play box. Because they had such an amazing time. 
talk about it. They laugh when they think about it. They're like, hey, when can we go back to Disney? I mean, Disney's marketing machine. They're really doing their job. And I, I just want to be like, never, but they're like, please, Dad, can we please go back? And I'm like, Oh, we'll finally give in. And now that we're going in November, at least once a week they're asking, hey, when are we going back to Disney? Disney's not about me. But I can't wait to get back there. Because as a dad, there's no bigger joy when I'm going to see the smiles on their faces. Is it the vacation I'd choose? Not even close. <laughs> but it's not about me. I know for some of you, you've asked the question, well, this direction that Lakeside's going. Is it about me? And on one hand, I could see how you could think, no, it's not. But if you feel that way, I want to challenge you, you've completely missed it. And I don't mean that personally. I just mean you've completely missed it. Because as you grow with Jesus, you arrive at a place where you realize there is no greater joy than being used by God. And maybe there will be some things that you're not crazy about, and maybe there's some things that will make you want to pull your hair out. But that doesn't mean Lakeside isn't for you. Two countdowns ago, we played a country song in the countdown. I could not wait until that series was over. It was a painful three and a half minutes for me every single week, but it's not about me. Some of you haven't loved Jesus long enough to hate country music yet, and you'll get there. You'll get there. But it's not about me. And so for you, occasionally, we'll still throw in a country song into the countdown. It's about seeing people make the decision to follow Jesus. It's about coming alongside people who've made the decision to follow Jesus and helping them take the next steps. And grow to become more like Jesus. It's about all of us who follow Jesus saying, if God has done anything for us, then our response is it's not about us. And I promise you, when we embrace that, and when God uses that, we are going to see God work. And we're going to feel joy. And the same way I'm going to be on those stinking teacups, spinning around, <laughs> just praying they will end, and hearing my kids cackle and saying, this and those Mickey-shaped pretzels with the little cheese cups are worth every penny this vacation. God, help us be unified. That's our prayer. Help us follow the direction you'd have us go. Help us listen. Help us love. Help us serve. And help us all be willing to say, it's not about me. If you've done anything for us, it's not about us.
Let us be unified. Let us be one. And let us get out of your way. We ask you to go to work. And blow our minds with what you do here for your glory. In your son, Jesus' name we pray.